get ready. There often seems to be a bit of an overlap between theme park enthusiasts and movie buffs. People who like theme parks will often be fans of various forms of media. This makes sense considering the amount of intellectual property there is accumulating in many of the larger resorts around the world. But if you're anything like us, it's always a nice treat to get to see theme parks playing a pivotal role in a movie. We've previously discussed this on our channel, outlining many films set and shot in both Universal Orlando and Walt Disney World. You should definitely check these videos out after this one. However, we wanted to take a broader look at some movies set in theme parks. But as always, before we jump into the video, we just want to thank you for taking the time to check this one out, and if you enjoy it, please make sure to give it a like and considering pressing the subscribe button as we put out new theme park videos every week. With that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Get ready. National Lampoon's Vacation, Six Flags Magic Mountain. The original National Lampoon's Vacation from 1983 has a somewhat cult status. This quirky, off-the-wall comedy features the Griswold family making a cross-country trip to Wally World. As is the case with movies set in theme parks, Wally World is a pseudonym for Six Flags Magic Mountain. Everyone that has done a big road trip will know that it's the journey that is often the most eventful part. There are plenty of hijinks for the family to get up to on the way, with the last 15 or so minutes featuring the Six Flags Park. This is a very fun movie though, and one of the most beloved of the decade. You can also see the late John Candy trying not to throw up on the now defunct Colossus. What's not to love? Roller Coaster, Six Flags Magic Mountain and King's Dominion. From one Magic Mountain movie to another, with a little bit of King's Dominion in the mix too, Roller Coaster was released in 1977 at the peak of the disaster movie craze. During this time, it seemed like everything was going wrong. Your local amusement park was no different, as is the case in this theme park set movie. Roller Coaster follows the story of a maniac terrorist who has been planting bombs on roller coaster tracks in various theme parks. This is a film to be celebrated for its pure cheese factor, as well as the star studded cast including George Siegel, Henry Fonda, and a very young Helen Hunt. You also get to witness these two parks in their early days, which is sure to be a healthy dose of nostalgia for those who can remember visiting back then. Saving Mr. Banks, Disneyland. Saving Mr. Banks retells the story of how Walt Disney acquired the rights to produce the feature-length movie of Mary Poppins. Retelling is probably the best way to describe it as some of the facts portrayed in the movie have been debated. Needless to say though, this is a must-see for any fans of the history behind the man himself. It's just best to take everything with a grain of salt. But there's a very prominent scene where Walt manages to convince P.L. Travers to visit Disneyland. When filming the movie in 2012, the park was transformed in order to help it resemble the appearance that it would have had back in 1961, when the film was set. Many real-life cast members were also used as extras for these scenes. Not too bad for going from a ride operator to starring in a scene featuring Tom Hanks and Emma Thompson. Final Destination 3, Playland. For many, Final Destination 3 may be the reason you have a deathly fear of riding roller coasters. And let's face it, all of us have at least envisioned something terrible happening to us while on one. There are many scenes throughout the franchise which have stuck with us, but the opening scene from the third installment is often the most recalled. The opening to this film sees Wendy, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, experience a premonition of the roller coaster she is about to ride with her friends. The hydraulics that secure the seatbelts malfunction, causing all of the riders to violently die in a multitude of ways. The Devil's Flight coaster used in the film was actually a generic corkscrew model found at Vancouver's Playland. CGI was used to make the coaster look much larger and far more intense than it really was. Jurassic World – Six Flags New Orleans Everyone knows that the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World franchises are based on a concept of a futuristic theme park. Dinosaurs have been brought back to life through some fancy sci-fi storytelling, but of course things don't go to plan. Both iterations featured sequels that showed the parks in disrepair. It's interesting to note that part of Jurassic World was filmed on the set of the location of the now abandoned Six Flags New Orleans. Following the devastating effects of Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the park was never reopened. Instead, it was abandoned and the site was never been used since. The site was used in the original Jurassic World for scenes depicting an operating park. A set was built in the car park, which made up the main midway and entrance to Jurassic World. However, the abandoned park itself was never actually featured in the film, as you would have expected. Adventureland, Kennywood Adventureland follows a young Kirsten Stewart and Jesse Eisenberg as they spend their summer working at a local amusement park. 
The main characters must overcome typical day-to-day -day scenarios one can expect from working in a small hometown park. Adventureland is actually loosely based on the director's own experience. He grew up during the 1980s and previously worked at Adventureland, found in Farmingdale, New York. Of course, the real set was the historic Kennywood. Several alterations were made to the appearance of Kennywood in order for it to appear more run down than it actually is. Much of the film was actually shot in late autumn and winter, despite the summer setting. This meant that the crew had to try and hide the Pennsylvania snow from appearing in many of the shots. Beverly Hills Cop 3 – Great America Cedar Fair's Great America played the backdrop for this early 90s sequel in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. At the time though, it would have been known as Paramount's Great America before it was bought out by Cedar Fair. Originally the plan was to use Knott's Berry Farm, however they declined to allow filming in their park. Axel Foley must fight against a gang of villainous bad guys who are posing as theme park security. It is regarded as the worst installment in the franchise, however it's filled to the brim with cameos. George Lucas even makes an appearance as a ride operator. The former earthquake ride from Universal Studios Florida is also used as a set piece for one scene. As far as movies set in theme parks go, this is a worthy watch just for a lazy Sunday afternoon. And that's a wrap, you can add these movies to your watch list. Now you're ready. As mentioned, we have two other videos that specifically discuss movies filmed in both Universal Orlando and Walt Disney World, which will be on screen now. What other movies that feature real life theme parks do you enjoy? Leave a comment down below and let everyone else know.